senior White House correspondent Ed Henry joining us live now. And Ed, good to see you. What, what are we expecting to hear from the president today? Well, we're uh, getting a, a taste of it uh, that it's going to be uh, a shocking, uh, frankly, and that's coming from the president's national security advisor, retired General Jim Jones, telling USA Today in an interview uh, that basically uh, dots should have been connected here, uh, that uh, U.S. officials had some information and intelligence suggesting the eventual suspect never should have gotten on that plane. I think there's a certain shock to it in the sense that, you know, uh, the man in the street will say, will, 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 will be surprised that, you know, th these correlations weren't made. Because mm -hmm. the, the, there, there was data out there. There was a number of things that could have triggered uh, a prevention of this individual ever getting on an airplane. The other big question who, is who will be held accountable for those big mistakes that are shocking, in the words of one of the president's own top aides right there. You remember last week in Hawaii, the president said uh, that he demands accountability at all levels of government. He also spoke about systemic and human failings. Uh, we've heard a lot about the systemic failings, about uh, a terror watch list that uh, maybe are not working, uh, need to be more efficient, aviation security that needs to be beefed up. But we have not heard a lot about the human, fa human failings. Yeah. Uh, who's responsible? Which agency? Uh, but basically, who dropped the ball so you can figure out how to fix this, basically, Tony? Yeah, and, Ed, you know, I guess there's some reporting that there is a, an L.A. Times article with some information about the report that the White House is actually uh, knocking down. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, the L.A. Times is reporting that basically while this flight was in midair from Amsterdam to Detroit, officials on the ground, U.S. officials, uh, put uh, the names uh, from that flight into the database, uh, and they turned up this eventual suspect, and they were planning to question him when he landed. Now, the, the thrust of the report suggests uh, that maybe uh, if they had gotten this information a little sooner, they would have kept him off the plane. It would have been a dramatic way to stop all of this. What the White House is knocking down is the notion uh, that they could have stopped it. They say the problem problem here uh, is they already know uh, that he was in a broad database, but the problem is that he was not on a more select no-fly list. That's what needs to be fixed, because even if this information had gotten to the airline officials earlier, they had no specific intelligence or anything to keep him off the plane. That's one of the things, things that needs to be fixed. And as you noted, one of the things we're expecting to come in this report yeah. today, what exactly went, went, went wrong there, Tony? All right, our senior White House correspondent, Ed Henry Forrest, and appreciate it. Thank you, and see you next hour. Uh, the administration is digging deeper into terror suspect Umar Farouk Abdul Muttalib's ties to Al Qaeda. Senior political analyst David Gergen talked about Al Qaeda's recruiting tactics on CNN's Anderson Cooper 360. Uh, David, what are you hearing? I know you you um, you had some inside information about Al Qaeda and and some of their recruiting tactics. Uh, the, uh, I was told today, Anderson, by folks at the White House that uh, they, were, uh, they were quite surprised at uh, the, the recruiting effort and how successful and how quick it was. Uh, he, he, this young man, just like uh, Mr. Hassan, was drawn in by the Internet, which w one person called today hauntingly persuasive uh, for uh, people like him. But then he went to Yemen. He was only there for about four months. And in that time, essentially, he was swept up uh, he, and he was brainwashed uh, in an almost cult-like environment. And then they sent him forward on his mission. And it happened very quickly. Uh, he was turned around and turned into this, uh, in effect, a, a guided missile for the al-Qaeda. So the White House is trying to figure out now, how does this al-Qaeda operation work? Is this similar to what's going on elsewhere? How sophisticated is it? And a reminder, the president will give his security review of the failed Christmas Day terror attack. CNN will bring you those comments live at 3 o'clock Eastern time this afternoon right here in the newsroom. And terror on the Internet. You heard a bit about that from David Gergen. It is how one youth movement is recruiting for al-Qaeda. Our senior editor of Middle East Affairs joins me next.